ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله الى الناس كافه بشيرا ونذيرا فبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما احبتي في الله اوصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله والاحسان my beloved brothers and sisters, I start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings and salutations upon our beloved Masjid Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam My brothers and sisters, the greatest thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us or one of the greatest things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us is the Qur'an. This beautiful revelation that we have, this Furqan. The Furqan, meaning the criterion that distinguishes between truth and falsehood. This guidance where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِهِ أَقْوَمْ Indeed, this Qur'an guides to that which is the most upright. This Qur'an, that in it there is no doubt. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the book, and clearly there is no doubt in it, and it is a guidance to those that have piety. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you see, on the shelves in the masjid. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we recite when we pray. The Fatiha, the smaller chapters, the larger chapter from Baqarah to Nas. The Quran that we ensure our children memorize. The Quran that perhaps you grew up going to madrasa and learning. The Quran that when we want to know what is halal and haram, we look back towards the Quran. Our whole lives revolves around this book. We learn halal and haram from it, right from wrong from it, the stories of the past from it, what's going to come from the future, from the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those that act upon it, Allah will raise them. Those that don't, they will eventually fall. Now, now that you understand what the Quran is, my brothers and sisters, what I want inshallah ta'ala dedicate this khutbah to is the importance of the Quran and how often our communities misunderstand it. And I want to start by talking about when we send our children to madrasa, what the objective is behind it. No doubt many of you youngsters here go to madrasa and many of the elders here have children that go to madrasa. And we celebrate the memorizing of the Quran. Just not too long ago, we had one celebration here in the masjid about our hufad. May Allah bless them and protect them. And we wish, at least I hope that we wish our children all memorize the Quran. But... This concept of becoming a hafiz and memorizing the Quran is something that we often abandon as we grow older. It is something that we tell our children to do until they get to college ages and then all of a sudden that discussion isn't there anymore. You rarely see someone in university or has a full-time job trying to memorize the Quran as a community we relegate it to something we tell children to do. And that's a fact. What I want to ask you all is, why was the Qur'an revealed? Why was the Qur'an revealed? Who was the Qur'an revealed for? Was it revealed for us to tell our children to memorize it to the point where it became a cultural habit? No matter how religious your household is, whether in your household you pray or you don't pray, you send your children to madrasa. You may be involved in tons of muharramat. The very book that tells you to stay away from those prohibitions is the one you tell your children to memorize. What contradiction are we living by? We have completely disregarded, misunderstood the purpose and the objective of the Quran, my brothers and sisters. If someone were to ask you today, 
What is the purpose of the Quran? The answer is not, my brothers. Or it is definitely not its primary purpose to be memorized. And it would have been a great thing if all of us were memorizing the Quran, young and old. No, it is the children that we tell to memorize. You go to madrasa. I've got more important things to do. I've got more important things to do. This is not the relationship that the greatest of men and women, the Sahaba, had with the Quran. My brothers and sisters, Allah revealed the Quran for a guidance. It is hudan lil muttaqeen. Inna hadha al Quran yahdi lil latihi aqwa. We are told to recite the Quran often in, in, in the Quran itself. We are told to recite it, to ponder upon it, to act upon it, to, to judge each other with it. This is the point of the Quran, to learn from its lessons, to live by it, to live by the Quran. We are in a very, very dire situation, and I'll tell you why, my brothers and sisters. Many of you here, every Friday, may Allah bless you and reward you, dedicate yourselves to read Surah Al-Kahf on Yom Al-Jumu'ah. You come early in the masjid, and you read Surah Al-Kahf. Why do you read Surah Al-Kahf? Because the Prophet told us from one Jumu'ah to another Jumu'ah, it is a light. Because it was the act of the Salihin and the righteous. Because you want the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But, why do we read Surah Al-Kahf? The point of Surah Al-Kahf is to ponder over the lessons that are being taught in Surah Al-Kahf. Isn't it shameful, sad even, that you have been reading Surah Al-Kahf, Jumu'ah after Jumu'ah, Friday after Friday. And if I were to ask you, what does Alhamdulillah الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا mean? What does that mean, my brother? What does that mean, my sister? What is Allah telling us here? And you would be, I don't know. I recite it. I read it. We have fundamentally misunderstood the purpose of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fundamentally misunderstood it. The Quran is not... How many ahadith are we being told that we have to memorize the Quran? And if I were to give you a priority list of what we should be doing with the Quran, number one, my brothers and sisters, should be that we understand what Allah is telling us. There are so many lessons in the Quran coming from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Telling you don't have this behavior, have this behavior instead. Stay away from this, do this instead. Encouraging you to worship, to pray, to give charity. Maybe if we read the Quran as it is meant, with understanding, we would have been in a better state as an ummah. Maybe if we read the Quran with understanding, many of the shirk and the bid'ah and the innovation and the sins within our community would disappear. This is why you have people that have memorized the Quran but they do not act upon it because they don't understand what they're reading. I ask you, Billahi alaykum, when you attend taraweeh and you hear the whole Quran cover to cover, again, may Allah reward you for your worship. The point of it is that you hear the Quran, the whole Quran, with its values, with its morals, with its lessons, with its stories with his commandments, with his prohibitions, that you hear all of it. And that changes you. That has an impact on you when you understand the statements of your Lord. This is the point of the Quran, my brothers and sisters. The Quran that made the Sahaba accept Islam when the Prophet recited upon them because they understood the language the Quran was revealed in. We are in a state where we do not understand the language. And that's not our fault. We're not Arabs. In fact, now many of the Arab world have abandoned the, Arab, the Arabic language that is in the Quran and they struggle understanding it. So, so the African and the, um, the person from the subcontinent and the Russian and the river, they will all struggle. But that's not an excuse. That is not an excuse, my brothers and sisters. There's no point of encouraging everyone, especially the youngsters, everyone to memorize the Quran, memorize the Quran, memorize the Quran. And then we wonder, wait, he was a half, it would happen to him. He was a half, it would happen to him. I'll tell you what happened to him. 
He memorized 114 chapters whose meanings he does not understand. What lessons is he meant to take from them? What lessons is he meant to take from them? Let's change our relationship with the Quran, my brothers and sisters. How is it meant to unlock our hearts? Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Wallahi, we need more huffad in our community. We need to encourage our youngsters and our elders and everyone to memorize the Quran. And you should dedicate your life memorizing the book of Allah. There is a great reward in it. And you should recite it as often as possible for the Prophet wasallam said, whoever recites one letter from it is like 10 rewards. And you should have a regular portion of the Quran that you read. And there's a great reward in it to read the book of Allah. But the point of the Quran, the objective of the Quran, the reason why it was revealed was to give us guidance. It was to guide us to the straight path. That is the point of the Quran. Which is why, my brothers and sisters, I want, inshallah ta'ala, for all of us here to make that decision. I will not be among those that read the Quran and are not curious about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. How are we meant to call others to Islam, my brothers and sisters? When we tell others, come join Islam, and they tell us, why should we join Islam? And we tell them, you should join Islam because we have the word of the Almighty. We have the truth. We have the statements of Allah Almighty that tells us right from wrong, whereby it gives us a life worth living and a eternal bliss in the hereafter. When we tell them the message of Tawheed, and we tell them to join Islam, and they ask us, what is this message that you're talking about? And we say, it is the Quran. And they tell you the Quran. And they, say, they ask you, do you have, have you read the Quran? Do you understand the meaning of the Quran? And if your answer is, I went to Madrasa when I was younger and I did hifz for a little bit. And I know enough to pray by. But as for this great message that I'm telling you about, that I'm calling you towards, yeah, I don't understand that meaning. And I don't bother learning it. I have no time for it. Brothers, if you can try and give space for each other, Barakallahu feekum if it's possible. This is not the point of being believers of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to understand the importance of the meanings and the wisdoms and the lessons in the Quran and to not be among those that just just focus on the memorizing, ignoring that which is even more important. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. My brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an to ponder over these meanings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi was sent to us to help us understand the Qur'an. To bayna lahum ma nuzil ilayhim. So that you can clarify for them that which has been revealed upon them. It is a message from the Almighty. It is a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is worth more than anything else in this world. It is more blessed than anything else. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he complained to Allah Almighty, and he said, Ya Rabb, inna qawmi takhadhu hadha al-Qur'an mahjura. Indeed, my people have taken the Qur'an to be an abandoned thing. What does it mean to abandon the Qur'an? The great scholar Ibn Al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he said to abandon the Qur'an means the following things. To abandon the Qur'an means the following things. Number one, he said, Tarku al-sama' wal-imanu bihi. It is to never listen to the Qur'an. That was the main crime of the, uh, the Kufar of Quraysh that they would even put their fingers in their ears. They did not want to hear the Quran and they refused to believe in it. So this is the first one. Refusal to believe and to not hear the Quran. Alhamdulillah, many of us listen to the Quran, continue listening to the Quran, whether it's in prayers or outside of prayers, in your car, at home. Remember that you, your ears should be hearing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentions, Tarkul amalu bihi. It is to not act upon it. So that which the Quran prohibits, stay away from. That which the Quran commands, then do it. That which the Quran encourages, then you're encouraged to do as much as you can. And remember, it is a source of guidance. Try and find guidance within the Quran in all aspects of life. 
in your home life, in your work, in your behavior. Everything is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentions another way of abandoning the Quran is that you do not ponder over it. That when you are reading it, you don't reflect over the ayat. You don't think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you. You don't, you, you just either, if you are reading it even, you're just speeding through it, right? Or you're not interested in its meaning. Even if you're not speeding through it, you're not interested in its meaning, which is why there's no sense of curiosity. What is my Lord saying? What does Surah Tabbat, Surah Al-Masad talk about? What does Ayat Al-Kursi mean? Why is it so important? Allahu la ilaha illahu al-hayyul qayyub. La ta'akhudhu sinatum wa la nawm. You all have memorized Ayat Al-Kursi. But has there ever been a part of you? Wait, why is it so important? What does it mean? What is Allah telling us about himself? This is among the ways we have abandoned the Quran. And he mentions, It is to leave the Quran as a means to judge between you. That whenever two are in conflict, they return back to the Quran as a, as, as a judge. And that they judge between them in the Quran. And that our governments, the Muslim ones, they take their constitution as the Quran. And that in every aspect of our life, halal and haram, right or wrong, is decided by the Quran. If you're not doing that, then we have also abandoned the Quran. And finally, he mentions, It is to leave the Quran as a form of healing. That when we are sick, we don't go back to the Quran to recite upon each other. These are all ways we have abandoned the Quran. And if you do not want to be among those that the Prophet complained about, Ya Rabbi, inna qawmi takhadhu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. O Allah, indeed, people took the Quran as an abandoned thing, then do not abandon the reading, and do not abandon the listening, and do not abandon the believing, and do not abandon the acting upon, and do not abandon the seeking it as a form of healing, and do not abandon pondering over it. My brothers and sisters, Memorizing the Quran is an extremely high priority. It has, is a higher priority than much of what we uh, busy ourselves with. But it is not more of a priority than everything else we spoke about today. And the Quran itself should be a priority. Among that should include that we are memorizing and encouraging it because we are desperate for more huffad. I know because we, we're looking for taraweeh prayers, how much we are looking for them. Barakallahu feekum, ikhwani fillah. But that being said, Let's not lose focus with our children, with ourselves, with our families. The point of the Quran is that we find hidayah and guidance from it. That is the point of the Quran and you will not be able to do so if you do not understand it. A few points of advice. Start with, you should have a short uh, term uh, plan and a long term plan. A long term plan would be that each one of us learns the Arabic language so that we know the Quran. But that will take time, and it's not very easy. But it should be part of your plan. I need to brush up, learn more my, the Arabic language so that I can understand the Quran and the Hadith. The short-term plan should be that you start reading the translations of the Quran. It doesn't take much. From next Friday, when you come, open the Mus'haf, when you're reading your Jumu'ah, Surah Al-Kaf, also go through the translation of the Quran. It will help you. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, because for you to learn the Quran, you need to expand upon it, meaning a translation is not enough, but it will get you somewhere. And between reading the translation, which is an immediate fix, I also want you guys to start attending tafsir lessons, whether they are online or on site, in the message or elsewhere. You should go anywhere you heard, the Quran is being explained, it is a tafsir lesson, attend. Because wallahi, it will unlock things for you. That when you hear the wisdoms behind the statements of Allah the Almighty, that this will change you. It will change your behavior. It will change your worship. It will change so many things about you, just like it did the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu So those three things. Short term, read the translation. Also, try to attend tafsir classes. And finally, brothers and sisters, the ideal way, this Quran is Quran and Arabian. It is in the Arabic language, and we should try and learn it to the best of our ability. Barakallahu feekum. Sallu ala nabi minkam amarakum allahu ta'ala haithu qal. Inna allahu malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amana sallu alayhi wa sallimu tuslimu. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammad. Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inaka hamidul majid. Wa radhi allahum an khulafai al-arba abi bakar wa umar wa uthman wa ali. Wa an sa'il al-sahabati al-tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan illa yawm al-deen. Allahumma la tafariq jam'ana hadha illa bi dhanbi al-maqfur. Wa sa'i al-mashkur. Wa amal al-mutaqabal al-mabrur. Allahumma habib ilin al-iman. Wa zayinu fi qulubina. Wa kari ilin al-kufr wa al-fusuq wa al-isyan. Wa ja'alna min al-rashidin. Wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa aqimi salah.